The Way Home for Wolf by Rachel Bright and Jim Field As a rainbow of lights flickered soft in the night, dusting diamonds of ice in a desert of white, the wild whipping wind, it whistled its tune to a howling of wolves and a shimmering moon, and the loudest Aroo! in this echoing song was a wolfling called Wilf at the heart of the throng. He loved to be fierce and longed to be grown. He liked to try everything all on his own. Look at me, I am big, I am tough, he would growl, whilst he showed off his strength and practised his prowl. One night it was time for the wolves to move on. New folks had moved in and their shelter was gone. So they left right away to find a new cave. They would have to walk far and they'd have to be brave. Let's go, shouted Wilf. I am ready to lead. You're too small, laughed the wolves. It's an elder we need. One day, they advised, you will guide from the front. I suppose, muttered Wilf with a huff and a grunt. They struggled through snow as high as their flanks and leapt over rocks as they scaled icy banks. Wilf gave his all to keep pace and keep up, but strong-willed as he was, he was still just a pup. He kept dropping back with each clamber and climb as the pack journeyed further away all the time. Exhausted and breathless, he strayed off the track when a blizzard blew in and he lost his way back. Wilf longed to howl, help, and to holler it loud, but his throat was too hoarse and his heart was too proud. He lay on the tundra, his tail curled up tight. A blanket of stars was his bed for the night, until crack went the ice, crack and creak. Wilf jumped to all fours with a deafening shriek. Ah! He stuck out the claws on every limb. He had to hold on because Wilflings can't swim. Then he fell and he fell rolling and spinning. It felt like the end, but was just the beginning. Since somebody down there had heeded his scream and she swooped from beneath like a watery dream. I'll help you, she called. Just reach for my horn. A majestic and magical sea unicorn. Wilf's pride washed away and he stretched out a paw as she lifted him gently back onto the shore. Don't worry, she sung before dipping her brow. My friend Mr Walrus will help you out now. And there, right behind him, a huge tusky fellow lifted his whiskers and let out a bellow. Ho! To the ridge, he proclaimed with his chin in the air. My friend Mighty Muskox will take you from there. And with waftings of fish and a very loud snort, their journey was made and their travel seemed short. And there, sure enough, on the ridge was the ox who took Wilf as far as his friend, Arctic Fox, who followed his nose through the trees to a goose, who guided him, honking, to this ancient moose. The moose knew these wilds like no other soul. He was steady and true in pursuit of their goal. And as twilight closed in, moose sang out a call, to a flittering, fluttering, tiny fluff ball. A bear moth who showed Wilf the rest of the way to the place where this wolfling most wanted to stay. Thank you! Wilf waved as he rejoined his pack and the wolves howled with joy <coughs> that their wolfling was back. They huddled him in and cuddled him close and fussed over which wolf had missed him the most. Wilf, he knew then that when all come together, 
the darkest of times, are easy to weather. So he bowed to the narwhal, ox, walrus and goose, and vowed to the fox and the moth and the moose, if ever I meet one who strayed off their track, I'll help them along by guiding them back. And true to his word, Wilf is different now, and his world seems much smaller and warmer somehow. Since wherever life takes you, wherever you roam, we're all just a handful of friendships from home.